All right, benchmark seven to uh, in coordinate geometry, we're going to do midpoints and lengths of segments, uh, which also known as the, as the distance formula. We're going to use the distance formula. First problem, given two points, find the midpoint. Well, the midpoint formula, you're going to take your x values, add them up, divide by two. Take your y values, add them up, divide by two. And that's it. Make it an ordered pair. That's pretty straightforward. So just take your negative five and your seven, add them up, divide by two, comma, negative nine and the negative two, add them up, divide by two. Negative five plus seven is two. Uh, negative nine plus negative two is negative 11. If you can reduce them, reduce them. In fact, I'll just make this one negative 5.5. You can leave it as negative 11 halves if you want, uh, but make sure you make the two over two a one. It's pretty straightforward stuff for the midpoint formula. Uh, I'm going to erase this, so pause it if you need to copy something down. I'm going to use the same formula for the next part, though. The next part says that B is the midpoint. Well, so if this is the midpoint, I'm looking for some unknown C, some X and some Y. So I'm going to take my negative 5 plus my unknown. Whenever I find the average of those two points, I should come up with an average of 7 because of that point right there. I also need to add my negative 9 and my unknown y value, divide that by 2, and I should come up with a negative 2. So I'm going to kind of write it like that. It looks kind of goofy, but that's what I'll write it. And then I'm going to solve this. Now when I solve this, I don't know if you want to maybe put that over 1 and cross multiply. You could do that. Or you could just use fraction busters, multiply both sides by 2, and it'll get rid of the 2 on the left side. Whatever makes it easy for you. Uh, either way, you should get negative 5 plus x equals 14, comma, basically, maybe I'll write it like this, uh, negative 9 plus y equals negative 4. Solve both those both separately. So here I get x equals, if I add 5 to the right side, I get 19. And on the right side, if I add 9 over there, I get y equals 5. Write your final answer as an order pair. 19.5. So in other words, what I just did is I found point C. So if I take my 5 and my 19, I add those up, divide by 2, I should get 7. My negative 5 and my 19. If I take my negative 9 here and my 5, I add those up and divide by 2, I should get the middle point, the midpoint, negative 2. Okay, again, I need to erase this. So pause if you need to. Erase that. Now this last one is going to pretty much be using the distance formula. They want to know the length of a segment. So S is negative 4, 2. Put that on my graph. It's about right there. And G is negative 3, negative 5. This is a hard graph to follow, but 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5. And it's kind of blurry on my screen anyway. Uh, I want to find the length of this segment right here, or the distance between those two points. Well, to do that, I can imagine that being the hypotenuse of a triangle. You know, find find the length, the legs, and I can just use the Pythagorean theorem to come up with the length of that hypotenuse. But when I look at that, the distance between, you know, the the x values here, I have this was what negative three, and that's negative four x y's my delta x. Well, that distance is just one unit, just one away from each other. If I want to find that distance here, well, if I change in height, my delta y, well, it goes from 2, from a height, because this is y, down to negative 5, well, that's 7 units. So essentially, I have this triangle here, a 7 and a 1, and I'm looking for that hypotenuse. So I could just use my Pythagorean theorem, 7 squared plus 1 squared. And you can do the problem this way, and that's fine. And get 50. Take the square root of each side. When you do that, you put a plus minus in front of there. We only care about the positive value of the square root of 50 because this is the length of a, of a segment. So we can ignore the negative and just get the decimal representation. Somewhere around 7.1. I know the square root of 49 is 7. And we really should put units here. Now, if I want to use the actual distance formula, it looks like this. x2 minus x1 squared 
y2 minus y1, and then square root. That's the distance between two points on, in a coordinate plane. Well, I essentially did all the work over there. It's the same stuff. You'll see how that works out. My Here's my x and my y. Here's my x and my y. The thing is, it can't be the same x and the same y, so let's just make that 1 and 1 and make this 2 and 2. So I'm going to subtract my x's, negative 3 minus negative 4, square, I'm just following the formula now, y2 minus y1 is negative 5 minus 2 squared, and at the end I'll take the square root. Well, negative 3 minus negative 4, if I go plus plus here, I'll get 1. It's not 7, it's 1, they're only one unit away, and we knew that from right here, from our picture. And right here, negative 5 minus, ne minus 2 is plus negative 2, so it's negative 7 squared. And we knew that distance was 7. So we get the same thing. 1 squared is 1, 7 squared is 49. So we get the square root of 50 again, which we found out. So here's your calculator, uh, 7 point. I'm going to say 7.07, but 7.1. Let's round it to the nearest tenth. We really should put units on there to this length. Anything that has to do with length or area or something, put, put some kind of units on there. Uh, that should be about it. Good luck.